standing by tonight. Up first, though, our own Jason Bellini, who spent the day with some of the 100,000 people now fleeing their homeland. On a cold and miserable day at Medica border crossing in Poland, we saw what war does to families. Yeah, she's got a bad Mothers, wives, children. Most of the refugees here are women. Many have left their men behind. Irina Didok is from the western city of Lviv. It took her more than 24 hours to get across the border with her mother, daughter, and their dog, Rocky. We don't sleep because we have uh, every time to like to move. Irina told me she doesn't know where they will go, but is clear about why she left. It's very, uh, it's very simple uh, because. Uh, Putin start start war in our country, and we can't uh, understand what what he will do. You don't know what he's going to do. And I think you also don't know what he will do, and no one know because it's know. crazy man. There are fewer men in these crowds. Max is here because he's 17, just young enough to be permitted to leave. I'm feeling pretty tired. It's been nonstop walking for the past three hours. Three I, hours. I, uh, 30. 30 hours. Yes. I haven't slept yet, so it's not exactly the most pleasant feeling in the world. Probably nine kilometers from the border, we moved on our feet. Across the border, back home in Ukraine, fathers, sons, brothers are staying behind to fight. Any man between the ages of 18 and 60 is prohibited from leaving Ukraine and encouraged to sign up. Across Ukraine, they're taking up weapons, strapping on fatigues and body armor, preparing to defend and possibly die. The worst of the fighting inside Ukraine has been between soldiers, but residential buildings like this one in Kyiv have been hit. The choice facing families is to take refuge in places like metro stations or get out, even if it means breaking up the family. Your husband, where is he? There's some comfort here in Poland, a cup of hot coffee, sympathetic border authorities. But the pain of war, the pain of separation, is written on each and every face. Jason Bellini joins us tonight. Jason, a few days ago, you were in this church basement. It was striking. You were showing what looked like, I'd call it catacombs, where people would eventually take shelter. Now we're seeing things like NICUs, very sick babies relocated to bomb shelters. And you start thinking, the mentally ill, the physically ill, they can't leave. What about Ukrainians who are stuck? Oh, that's uh, such a good point, Chance. And, well, I think the first thing that we should point out is that most Ukrainians are stuck. There's been around 50,000, 40,000 uh, uh, refugees thus far in the last 48 hours. But, I mean, considering the population, how big a country this is, that's just a very small number. And I, I, I think the important thing to recognize is that the border is set up in a way that you don't just, like, go marching on through. You have to be processed, and it's like one by one. It's a very slow, it's a trickle. Even though there's a flood of people who want to get out, it's just a trickle. And that brings me back to what you were just asking about. If the people I was talking to today who were crossing the border from Pol into Poland, um, they had to walk, they, they, I heard this from multiple people, they had to walk nine miles, or I'm sorry, nine kilometers, uh, that'd probably be around five miles. And so, if you're if you're not well, if you're elderly, you're not going to be able to do that. I mean, and and not just that, it's they're staying up all night long, sta just standing in the cold, waiting their turn to enter Poland. Yeah. I'm glad you're doing this story because the numbers really don't tell this full story. I know over the years you've covered several conflict zones, refugee crises. How does this compare? Well. I think back to Kosovo, the, that was 1999, and I was there during that refugee crisis. One difference was uh, many of the people who were crossing over from Kosovo into Albania, they were coming on tractors, they were coming in cars, and they were able to carry a lot of possessions. Whereas the people I'm seeing today, they could only carry a backpack, really, or r wheeling mm -hmm. luggage across the border. And they don't know how long they're going away for. They don't know 
when, perhaps even if, if they're going to go back. So some people brought their pets, but they had to make very difficult decisions, clearly, about what to bring. Now, there are some people who are going in by car, but there, too, I mean, you could be waiting days and days sitting in your car if you're trying to get out of the country that way. I think we're really at the beginning, just the very beginning, of a refugee crisis that, according to the U.N. High Commission on Refugees, could total four million people. So it's just, it's just astounding. Jason Bellini forced tonight in Poland, as you say, at the beginning, and that's why these stories need to be told, so we really can understand the depth and the desperation. Appreciate it.